lot of people credit me as being the creator of YouTube animation story time. Crazy just follows me. So I talk about things that happen around me. I talk about things that happen to me. And I animate these hijinks. I put them on my channel for the world to see. I know people that know people. I have a smile like, hey, hi, how you doing? Have a nice day. This is a private road. I can drive as fast as I want. I can do whatever I want. My parents sacrificed practically everything by coming to the United States to chase that American dream. But growing up, I felt like a constant disappointment. So when I started getting into the industry, I just wanted to do something my mom and dad could be proud of. I had no idea in my whole way of thinking that I would end up creating a whole new community. This is <laughs> Without Swoozy, today's YouTube animation scene would look very different. A dog day, Swoozy Dog! So this will be a pilot episode of video blog. Swoozy's video. I gotta come up with a cool name too. So I was born in Trinidad. I love it there, man. The food in Trinidad. I remember I was five, the neighbor was babysitting. She sat me down and put on the Thundercats. And she handed me a piece of paper and a pencil. And she's like, we're gonna draw him. I drew it and she was like, oh my God, that's so good. And I'm like, really? You think so? I gotta show my parents. My parents came home, I was like, look, mom and dad. And they were like, oh. I had never done anything in life that I created that got that kind of response. It was the right amount of encouragement at the right time that was just like, boom. I missed Trinidad. We had to leave because things got a little too hot. We were getting robbed while we were home. At that point, moms was like, all right, packing up. So we moved from there and came over to Florida and my parents told me, we're gonna get here, we're gonna grind, we're gonna chase that American dream. This. Is a Donde Thorn. Yes, that's me. I became who I am just watching the world, man. I think any good animator is a good observer. Watching the people around me, watching my parents, watching how humans interact with each other. It's just fascinating me. Because of that, I have a hard time sitting still. My brain is constantly spinning. I'm constantly just like, what's going on over here? What's going on over there? So yeah, growing up, I remember there were a lot of these. This is, this is the image. <laughs> I remember my parents just like, oh my God, this kid. So yeah, and I wasn't that great in school either. Studying? My dad was very big on academics. So middle school, my dad started to just be like, okay, I'm gonna outsmart this kid. So he'd be like, if you get on a roll this semester, I'll get you a TV and the new Nintendo. And that worked for about a week. <laughs> then, right back to being, you know, bad grades. In high school, my dad was in a constant state of mild disappointment. I really wish I could have given them good grades. So I constantly tell myself, once I'm at a place outside of school, I'm gonna show them that, hey, I'm not a disappointment, guys, I promise. Academics was not in my lane of interest at all. I'm visual. I loved drawing and animation. And I saw Aladdin for the first time, I saw Lion King for the first time. I was like, I wanna make this stuff move too. This is the feeling that I want to give people. So it was at that moment that I was just like, all right, animation, let's go. Party of one, I'm here. In my mind, I saw my life going a certain way. Animation, make a movie someday. So every breath that I have in me is going along that timeline. All the Disney animators all went to Ringling School of Art and Design or Cal Arts. So I wanted to be there. There's no backup plan, there's no plan B. I apply at both and I get rejected from both of them. 
Imagine having your whole life planned out and just gets all erased. Ugh. It's, uh, it's nobody believe, it's nobody believing in you, but you believing in yourself. That was really rough. Um, I mean, your friends are supportive, you know, but telling my parents, ugh, it felt like the one thing they wanted me to do, I couldn't do. At that time, I was a lifeguard. And I told one of the lifeguards that I didn't get in. And they were like, well, dude, you're screwed. You're going to be here for the rest of your life now. I'm like, you know what? No. You can't tell me what I can't do. So it was, this is where I want to be. This is where I am. What do I want to wake up doing every day for the rest of my life that's going to afford me the things that I want for me my family, my friends, because it's not just, oh, I want to be successful. It's buy mom a car and go from there. Wow, wow, wow. This feels like yesterday I was holding this thing. I remember as soon as you got home, I was like, uncle, uncle, look, look, look. And your statement was, I'm not going to have to watch one of these every day, am I? Know, I? Right? It's like, <laughs> that's fine. My uncle has always supported me. My first video, that's my uncle's camera. Yeah, no, this is what started it all. I would set this up and then flip this around so I'd have it like this and then just plug it into the capture box. I guess I'll tell you guys a little bit about me. What are my hobbies? I have a lot of hobbies. I like to break dance. I like to... I believe in luck. Draw. But I also believe luck is when preparation meets opportunity. There's another, another one more hobby that I have right here. I started playing the yeah. game called Dead or Alive. Nobody could touch me. Because I was winning tournaments online, a TV network grabbed me and six other top players for a gaming TV show. Once it came out, all my friends were just like, how do I get on TV? What's, what's it like over there? YouTube had just dropped. I mean, everybody's typing the letter U, T-U-B-E dot com, because it was that new. So I have my Hi8 camera, and I'm just filming the green room, and I'm filming Video Village, and filming all this stuff. And that was kind of the birth of how my YouTube started. Then I went home, and the first thing in my brain was, how do I now quit my job and do this for the rest of my life? Quitting the nine to five was probably the scariest thing I've ever done in my entire life. My dad didn't believe in anything I was doing. Oh, you're gonna do that? You're gonna suck at it. You wanna be a writer? You can't write. Even though all these accomplishments are happening, you know, he was like, the rug's gonna get pulled out from underneath you any day now. My parents were disappointed in me the first 12 years, 16 years, 20 years of my life. You know, walking by faith, not by sight, I was like, I can do this. I have to believe in myself more than anybody. When I got into YouTube, at that moment I saw it, like, this is the future. So I'm sitting there, I'm just like, what do I, what do I talk about? I mean, let me jump on and see what other people are talking about. And the first video that popped up was a video from a YouTuber called Lonely Girl 15. So what is the deal with kissing? And she was talking about her first kiss. I'm happy for you, but I hold my beer. I got this. Hey guys, how's it going? Very few people have heard this one, but I figure for coming and listening and watching these video blogs, this is your reward. And I posted it boomer. and I got 600,000 views back then. That was game changing. And uh, that was a big bang for my channel. It was this blackness and then boom. Don't watch Lost, okay? And they just added the glaze to it. There's some stuff I want to talk about here. The next one was a story. The one after that was a story. But the more I was making these YouTube videos, the less I was drawing. Before that, I only knew about Newgrounds, which was YouTube, but just only for animation. But then I saw another YouTuber, Winecone. He just kind of threw two or three frames into a narration. And I'm like, that's it, I can still draw? and tell stories 
and do YouTube? Oh, perfect storm. I understood that if I'm gonna do this regularly, I'm gonna need a quick turnaround. So the quickest thing that could help narrate was just circle, square, line, 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 line. But I realized really quickly it was the story. You could draw anything on through that on screen, but it's that story. They let you skip the lines and we all go on rides together. You My first real popular game, video food, using story like time so animation cute. was Confessions of a Disney Employee. Free food. In four hours, I had 100,000 views. And I just kept going and going. What's up? And then you text back like nothing, chilling at Chipotle. What you up to? I closed my eyes, but the 2012, great year for me. And then other channels are popping off. One day, I remember I was at Target. In the corner of my eye, I see this Target employee. He walks by and does a double take. Oh my God, you are Swoozy. YouTube has passed? TV networks now? It was almost just like pouring rocket fuel on a fire. As an artist, all we want is an audience. So to finally have that kind of validation, that kind of approval, that invisible pat on the back, like keep going, for somebody like me, after that counter hits a million, I feel like you, I can't be stopped. A few years later, I have about 7 million followers. Working on a Billy Views. Yo, this is crazy. Have you seen some of these videos? Yeah. Is this going on the internet? Yes. So we have a lot of unexpected, awesome stuff about to happen. You guys ready? We're going to the White House. If Drake and Kendrick Lamar got in a rap battle, who do you think would win? Gotta go with Kendrick. I had an interesting feeling at first when I started to see the animation community growing from what I had started. There's this attitude where it's a competition. It's not a competition, dude. If you could only subscribe to 10 people, it's a competition. Sure, here, have a fifth slice of cheese. Odd one's out. His stuff really just exploded. My upcoming Netflix series, Oddballs. His production value ah! is insane. Okay, before you even say anything, let's lay out some ground rules. Jaden Animation, she is the number one female storyteller talking about life issues and things of that nature. I've come to realize that I'm Arrow Ace, which stands for Aromantic Asexual. And I know what you're thinking. That's not gay. What the hell is that? I'm not just a friend. I feel like I'm also a fan. If you watch Jaden's animation, Odd One's Out, it's Alex Clark, anyone. Each of our stories and each of our individual backgrounds are so different from each other's. So that doesn't hurt me, that helps me, because when the water and the pier rises, all the ships rise with it. With all the videos I've made about the animated storytime community, I have yet to make a video about the guy who arguably started this whole thing. Uzi back in 2006, today's YouTube animation scene would look very, very different. Some people say I created story time animation. I think that I popularized it. To have the idea that I may have inspired some other channels to help share YouTube animation around the world, I'm honored. But if we're gonna talk about it, let's talk about it. It's not easy for black dudes on YouTube. How many can you name that's out here killing it? I'll wait. There's not a lot. So Disney hires a bunch of people from all over the world, of all ages. I understood what was silently expected of me, and I try to bring the best possible content for everything that I represent. Being a black male is one of them. So when the YouTube awards started happening, like they didn't happen back in 2006. So when that round came through and I wasn't nominated for a single thing, not even in the animation category, I was like, <laughs> it was like getting those college rejection letters all over again. I had to check myself real quick. Like I'm not doing this for awards. President. Susie, how are you? I am great. Thanks for your time. Good to see you. Um, so, as a black male yeah. who wears his hat backwards from time to time, I get racially profiled. I've learned to live with the harassment, but people are dying now. Right. 
my dad played it pretty low-key when he found out that I was going to be interviewing the president of the United States. But I could see his excitement. I'm sure all those years ago, he never thought that I'd be sitting here talking to the ether and all the people that have been inspired by my art. I mean, I brought home a brand new car for my mom. But he didn't seem phased by it. So it's almost like squeezing a lemon. It's like, come on, baby. <laughs> But that's what it is. I didn't do it for that. I did it for the community. I want to show you that you could suck at school and you could be a disappointment, but you could still, there's so much more outside of these walls that you can go off and do. The only person stopping you is you. If we're going to start talking about the future, oh, the future is unpaved. I'm so excited, nervous, but I also believe your imagination is your only limitation. No one has your voice. No one has your perspectives. And if I could start as a kid in his bedroom in Trinidad with his camera and then end up interviewing Obama in the White House, like, the sky is the limit. Let's go. This is a Donde Thorn. Yes, that's me.